here we have my solar panel. It's about a 30 watt solar panel. And it's hooked up to my little pump here. It's about a 12 watt pump. But it's actually pretty strong. It's it's uh, It's got some reasonable power behind it, as you can see. Um, and the cool thing is, is as soon as you stand in front of a solar panel, it turns off. And it turns back on. So there we go. That's the basis for the solar heater um, for the pool. The idea is that the pump will pump water through a black hose and down the back right there. That'll be in the sun. And it'll only do so when the sun is out and strong, so it will only um, get the water heated in there um, when the sun is out. But uh, yeah, the first, the first components work, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see how the rest does. So to improve upon my setup, I decided to get uh, some aluminum sheets to increase the surface area at which we're uh, collecting sunlight. The idea of these being aluminum to uh, transfer the heat that hits somewhere else and then transfer it to the pipe. Now, aluminum unfortunately doesn't have the greatest amount of um, absorption of sunlight, so I got some barbecue paint, which is black and matte, which means it absorbs a lot of the sunlight, and you can definitely tell, and I can't, I can't let you guys feel this of course, but this, this sheet here is a lot hotter than this one. They've been out in the sun. Like this one I can easily touch. That one has been out in the sun only for a couple minutes and it's getting to be quite hot. So what we want to do is we want to take all these coils and we're going to try and roll them up as flat as possible and lay them on those metal sheets. So another thing I did to help is I basically framed a crate here. Basically just taking some uh, some board and uh, some sides and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place these sheets of um, polystyrene at the bottom and a little bit on the side and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the aluminum uh, painted black uh, receiver on top of that and the idea is is that we want the heat to only go into the hose so what we're going to do is, on top of that, um, so we're going to have the styrofoam, then we're going to have the aluminum, then we're going to have the water hose curled up, and then we're going to have an air gap, and we're going to have a transparent sheet above that, so that we don't, we, we sort of build a greenhouse for the heat to continue collecting in. Alright, now we've coated our, our aluminum. We're gonna do. Just gonna place these in our box on top of the on top of the styrofoam to try and isolate the heat. So you don't get any heat leakage from the back. Look at that perfect fit, just like that. So we've got our beautiful heat receiver in here, and on top of that is the air is what the air gap is going to be. So between here and here, we're just going to have some air to uh, keep keep the heat from exiting out the top because air is a fantastic insulator. Um, and then we'll have that uh, covered with our plastic. Now the question is going to be, how do we roll up our hose as efficiently as possible to cross the entire surface as much as possible? But we want to keep the hose in contact with the aluminum because as we said before air is a very good insulator so we're going to roll it up in a in a way that we don't cross over and have to actually lift off from the aluminum sheet all right so after a bit of playing around i've tried a couple setups i've tried doing sort of two loops with a straight thing because i figured you know one circular loop and then another circular loop one exit there and one entry here might be sub might be might be ideal. But in the end, I think it might actually be easier to just come in, just go around, go around, go around, and then exit. Um, the main reason for that is, is that because the hose that I have is relatively rigid, so it's a little hard to bend into shape. And again, we want to minimize 
whenever the hose does this because as soon as the hose goes over another hose we're not transferring heat to it so we want to have as much possible contact with that aluminum hot surface that we've created um, so I'm gonna try and see if I can get that to fit in there without too many problems so wish me luck all right so the coil is inside of the casing now um, note that I sort of let the uh, the rings go towards the center the reason for that is that we want to cover as much possible surface area the center is really hard to cover but basically what we want to do is we want to space these guys apart so this here is bad we don't want to have them all cooling down the same section of the um, of the aluminum what we want to do is you want to create a little bit of a gap between each between each row so that the heat that hits here gets divided over these two whereas here these two are competing for the same amount of solar input so this side here is a bit is, is working a bit better I kind of want it to look more like this we want us to get this sort of even spacing between all the rows so we capture as much solar energy as possible all right here we are with the final setup I was originally going to use plastic sheeting to cover the top unfortunately the plastic sheeting that I have uh, gotten was a lot more milky than I wanted it to be so uh, be careful if you try and build this for yourself but you can see I've tried to put all these things spread out across the surface as much as I can and uh, the solar panel is lying in the sunshine and you can see this thing is pumping water which is pretty cool um, when we feel the hose here uh, the hose is definitely warmer than uh, than at the start um, and if we feel the water here um, versus the water that comes out there's actually quite a significant difference in temperature so that is that is pretty this water is well, it's a little hard to tell how much warmer it is but let's say uh, a degree or two warmer when we get farther away the difference actually increases because we've been replant we've been heating the the surface level water so um, there we have it um, we have a beautiful beautiful looking uh, solar heater completely self-made total cost for the parts I think was ten dollars for the uh, for the hose uh, about twenty thirty dollars for the little solar panel fifteen dollars for the little pump and the little connector was like five dollars <throat> that's really all you need um, I added the crate and the um, aluminum tubing so that I can move this thing around and I can tilt it to be at an optimal direction facing the Sun of course the Sun if you want to face the Sun you want to tilt it about 20 degrees towards it it's something we can do later um, that's where there's two attachment points um, and then the only thing really uh, that cost money was uh, so getting that crate um, getting the aluminum sheets a little bit of um, a spray spray can of paint which was like three bucks the aluminum sheets were about twenty dollars each so that's about forty bucks so I get I reckon I spent roughly a hundred dollars uh, for this but um, yeah if you if you put your hand on this this is definitely nice and toasty um, like you know truly warm um, and the cool thing is is here it's really warm but here it's not it's not warm at all and that proves that that heat is going into the hose um, here's where it starts to get cooler you can do that on the other side too so we can we can tell that the hose is absorbing all that energy except from here from the very center um, but still, it's uh, it's quite quite a nice system, and uh, I believe it's uh, we can call this a success. Um, I'll uh, I'll see if I can get the uh, clear sheeting on there at some point, and if I do, I will uh, I will add that as an update. All right, so I just wanted to run a quick comparative test. Um, so I put the uh, the thing on here, and we can see that the water temperature here right now. Um, 
9 degrees. And here, when we put it in here, we just put this uh, water through once. We leave it in here just for a little bit. Let's see what that goes up to. So that temperature is roughly 11 degrees Celsius. So that's a two degree temperature increase. And we can see it's actually going pretty quickly too. Um, it's filled it's filled a reasonable amount of water in here. Um, you can see it's you know it's going with uh, with reasonable speed here. And that water is a good two degrees warmer. So now um, if I calculate the uh, contents of the of this box and figure out how much water it is there, I can calculate how much energy has been added to the system. Um, but uh, that's that's actually a lot better than I expected, and the sun just came out like three minutes ago, so it might actually keep getting better than this. Alright, I set up the uh, the pump here to pump into this, um, this basin here, and we're just going to see how well it works. Today we've got a bit better sun. So we've got about 10 degrees in the pool, which is up from what we had before, which was roughly 9. <coughs> Now to see it comes out of here, we can already see it go up. So we're getting roughly nineteen twenty degree water coming out of the system. That's quite a lot. Um, that's really cool to see. Um, also important to see is that the amount of water that comes out of here is actually quite significant. So as you can see, all that water coming out at roughly uh, 10 degrees or 20 Fahrenheit above what we had before. Um, depends on the day though. Some days will be better than others, but overall quite, quite a good result. I'm very happy with it. So um, yeah. If you plan on build your own and make a maybe make a better one, let me know. And uh, let's uh, let's see who comes up with the best design. Talk to you later.